AMD's president talks GPU efficiency, power targets, chiplets, cache, and how NVIDIA and Intel stack up to them, says Raja Kaduri in a, uh, uh, and says Raja Kaduri is a visionary. There we go. AMD's vice president, senior vice president, Sam Navziger, Nav that's what we're going to go with today, <laughs> had a lot to talk about regarding GPU efficiency, power numbers, chiplets, cash, and how their competitors stack up to them in an interview with VentureBeat. Sam has been at AMD for 16 years and currently has the role of senior vice president, corporate fellow, and product technology architect at the Red Camp. One of the key areas where Sam has focused is the power efficiency and power technology department. A few years ago, AMD la laid out an ambitious goal of hitting 25 times performance efficiency by 2020, and the company actually achieved it. Currently, AMD-powered supercomputers not only land in the top 500, but also on the green 500 list. Now, the company is taking things further, achieving a 30x efficiency growth by 2025, or just three years from now. I would like to point out, too, we had a huge pump due to this in AMD stock. Uh, just today uh, as I was driving back from getting a coffee because I didn't make coffee today because I'm an idiot and forgot so I wasted money on a coffee but you know we'll get there uh, considering all of the techs that AMD has coming soon we are really excited to see AMD hitting this goal during the interview Sam talked about some of the key ways how they are achieving these goals and how the competition compares to them it is no longer a mystery that next-gen GPUs are going to get more power-hungry. AMD recently confirmed this themselves, and we have several NVIDIA leaks confirming the same thing. In a slide presented by AMD, the company expects GPUs to hit over 600-watt TDP figures. You can see here, holy moly, as we get closer to 2025, even before 2025. The company states that power consumption is exploding since demand and is outstripping the gains. To address this, AMD has a few key technologies up its sleeves that will allow them to ship a GPU that's compelling in both performance and wattage versus the competition. We've driven the frequency up, and that is something unique to AMD. Our GPU frequencies are 2.5 gigahertz plus now, and that's on the 6000 series, by the way, which is hitting levels not before achieved. It's not that the process technology is that much faster. And that is something that I did notice, right? We got our confirmation on Ada Lovelace from NVIDIA yesterday on their core clock, only going up to like 2520. And I think max boost like game boost where it can hit for a little bit and come back down was only 2700 megahertz. When the rumors, right? The first of all, what AMD already has on the 6000 series is 2700, right? And rumors of, you know, cracking that three gigahertz. However, they're still on five nanometer and Nvidia is even utilizing a custom process to get from five nanometer to four nanometer. However, they're not even hitting the same core clock. So it is clear that it is not a process technology. So they say, but we've uh, systematically gone through the design, re-architected the critical paths at a low level, the things that get in the way of a high frequency and done that in a power efficient way. Frequency tends to have a reputation of resulting in high power. But in reality, if it's done right, and we just re-architect the past to reduce the levels of logic required without adding a bunch of huge gates and extra pipe stages and such, we can get the work done faster. If you know what drives power consumption in silicon processors, it's voltage. That's a quadratic effect on power. To hit 2.5 gigahertz, NVIDIA could do that. And in fact, they do it with overclocked parts, but that drives the voltage up to very high levels, 1.2 or 1.3 volts. That's a squared impact on power. Whereas we achieve those high frequencies at modest voltages and do so much more efficiently. We analyze our design pre-silicon as we're in the process of developing it to access that efficiency. We absolutely analyzed heavily the NVIDIA designs and what they're doing. And of course, targeted doing much better. If we can already see that in our DNA 2 which hits over 2.5 gigahertz clock speeds while retaining a lower wattage than its direct competitor from NVIDIA. Sam highlights that the high power levels come directly from voltage. He states that NVIDIA GPUs can achieve the same clock speeds and even hit those in custom variants, but to do so, they have to drive voltages 
up. We just read all that. He does go on to say that the Infinity Cache in particular was an exciting thing to bring to the market. And like I've talked about before, as we're seeing a or Nvidia follow and fall in line with the whole new re-architected idea of adding more L2 cache, obviously Infinity Cache is a threat to Nvidia. And so I do believe them that this is a big deal. That, as well as some of the power optimizations, was a CPU leverage capability. At the core of that is the same dense uh, SRAM array that we use in our CPU designs for the L3 cache. It's very power efficient, very high bandwidth, and it turned out it was a great fit for graphics. No one had done such a large last level cache like that. In fact, there was a lot of uncertainty as to whether the rates would be high enough to justify it. But we placed a bet because going to a much wider GDDR6 interface is certainly a high power solution for getting that bandwidth. Once again, I talk about this in relation to cryptocurrency and mining because I think there's untapped potential in either the way that the algorithms for the mining process are developed or on the miner end developing and actually leveraging and taking advantage of Infinity Cash in some way or another because this will have to be the path forward to reduce the power consumption from the memory modules. And that's what he's highlighting here. We placed a bet on that. We went with a narrower bus interface, oh, we're aware, and a large cache. That's worked well for us. We see NVIDIA now following suit with larger last level caches, but no one's yet at 128 megabytes yet. Well, NVIDIA's not, right? AMD will be, we're pretty aware of that. And on the NVIDIA side, we're seeing 96 megabytes of L2 cache coming here soon, right? On Ada Lovelace. So what they did is basically we're seeing a, a revolution uh, or base, yeah, a, a revolutionary change to the way graphics processing is talked about and, and, and developed, right? We're moving into this kind of new last level cache realm to improve, you know, at least your traditional rasterization. He goes on to say, it's hard. So VentureBeat asked, compared to NVIDIA and Intel, do you feel like we're in a state divergence when it comes to designs or some kind of convergence? I think we're in a convergence, right? Because we're seeing NVIDIA follow suit. I think they're just too far behind. That's, that's how I see it, right? It's hard to speculate. NVIDIA certainly hasn't jumped on the chiplet bandwagon yet. We have a big lead there and we see big opportunities with that that they'll be forced to do so. We'll see when they deploy it. Intel certainly has jumped on that. And Ponte Vecchio is the poster child for chiplet extremes. I would say that there's more convergence than divergence. Me too. But the companies that innovate in the right space the soonest gain an advantage. Yep, that first mover advantage. It's when you deliver the new technology as much as what the technology is. Whoever is first with the innovation has the advantage. Bingo. So they say, he goes on to say, Raja is a visionary. He paints a great and compelling picture of the gaming future and features that are required to drive the gaming experience to the next level. He's great at that. As far as hands-on silicon execution, his background is in software. He definitely helped AMD improve our software game and feature sets. I worked close, closely with Raja, but I didn't join the graphics group until after he had left. He had a sabbatical there and went to Intel. So as far as the performance per watt, that was not really Raja's footprint, but some of the software dimensions and such. And as we know, really, if we want to be completely honest, the graphics department under Raja, uh, even the software, especially the software, wasn't that good. Um, and he's the one that's working on the Intel GPUs. Look, there could be other things going on at the company that affect that and so on and so forth. But from the Raja time uh, at Radeon compared to the time at Radeon now, it's night and day uh, in performance and software, right? So uh, I, I don't like from that aspect and from kind of the rocky releases of the Intel GPUs in the early reports, I have very little faith in Intel really doing much of anything. 
Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.